excited to see how this matchup will turn out. Back to you, Connor and Meredith. We got some great teams here, plenty of great players on both sides, but there's one on each side that you think that's going to stick out for both teams today. That's right, Connor. I really think that we have to keep our eyes on two really standout outsides for these programs. Number 12, Taylor Landfair from Minnesota, the Big Ten Player of the Year, and the ABCA National Player of the Week at the end of the season. And then on the other side for Southeastern Louisiana, Kaylin Newsom, the junior outside hitter from Houston, Texas, who leads her team in kills and points scored. Both of those two will be X factors in this match for their teams. For Minnesota, they are ranked number eight in the nation, but they're not the two seed in their region for this tournament. Matching up against Southeastern Louisiana Lions. This is their first ever tournament like we talked about, and this is their first 20 win season, folks, in more than two decades. This has been a long time coming. And that's a lot of thanks to Coach Jeremy White, who we'll talk about in a little while, but he talked about early in this week coming into this matchup, how they need to be able to slow down this gopher offense. And one way they want to slow down the game is just with their serving. That's exactly right. Minnesota ha can get streaky with their passing, and, and, and while they have a ton of really ta talented players in the back row, they can kind of get in a funk and not pass very well, and when they're not passing well, they don't have all of their offensive options available. So Jeremy White is absolutely keying on the right thing, going to have his team's turf tough tonight. And for Coach Hugh McCutcheon on the other side for the Gophers, this will be his last season he announced earlier in this season. It will be Finishing up his 11th season here, hoping to make a long run in this NCAA tournament. And we are just a few moments away. And here we are, Rachel Kilkelly for the Golden Gophers will have the first serve of set one. Fantastic block over there by Wenis. And Erica Davis was there for the Gophers as well. And they take the... He'll touch yeah. there off the Minnesota block, right? Yeah. So Kalen Newsom, who we talked about, right? Erica Davis was diving into that seam, and and then Kalen Newsom was able to clip her hand with that swing. And Southeastern Louisiana comes out with their first point in the NCAA tournament. There's Kill Kelly back there to bump it. Erica Davis throwing it down right in the middle. Fantastic offense there by the Golden Gophers. Minnesota has a distinct size advantage in this match, especially in the middle. And so Erica Davis, while she missed the blocking assignment on the prior point, did not miss that swing. Very nice job by Erica Davis. And coming in for the Gophers, Elise McGee. She's a transfer from Kansas. She'll sub in often. She's a fantastic setter. Southeast Louisiana. Hits it over. There's Kill Kelly in the background. McGee saving it. Lanford with his little tap. Fantastic save right there by Duplishin. And the Lions pick up the point. And there's Kaylin Newsom again. There's a reason she leads her team in kills. She gets a ton of swings. Um, uh, nearly uh, uh, more than a quarter of the sets go to her. Um, but she is really, really effective, averaging over four kills a set, 4.17 kills a set this season. She's an offensive star for this Lions team and a huge part of why they're in this national tournament, Meredith. And she's a great finisher as well. You saw right there a fantastic swing over the top, a lot of power on it. She's just a player that they're going to look to all the game here. Into the game, CeCe McGraw for the go. First down is Jenna Wenis. Really beautiful set choice by Melanie Shaftmaster there. You can see she puts Wenis in a situation where she's got a big seam in that southeastern Louisiana block, and she absolutely capitalizes. Thanks. Taylor Landfair sometimes takes a lot of credit away from Melanie Shaftmaster. She's such a huge part of that offense, as you saw there. And right at the net was Shaftmaster, but the Lions offense showing up and taking the lead back from the Gophers again. Yeah, that's right. And, and you know, good for them. I think the Lions are, are sort of probably playing with an attitude. They've got nothing to lose. They're going to come out swinging. It's their first time in the tournament. They're not seated. They're going to go hard. They've got to just bring it to Minnesota, and they're certainly doing that in these early early points. And Keelan Newsom picked up her third kill off ready of the game and Minnesota says take this as they even this one up at three. Absolutely and I, I, we we should be watching Melanie Shaftmaster for the Minnesota Golden Gophers to continue to mix it up with her sets. I would expect her to distribute the ball all over the net to try and get all of her hitters involved. Landfair serving it up for the Gophers. It all go back there. That's Boyne throwing it down. Looker fantastic diving effort there by Tulis. On the other side, McGraw, and looks like the ref's going to give, it double. The, lines a, yeah, give yep. the lines a point there. That's right. Yeah, there's a double call there. So, you know, I, I think this is 
Um, sort of to be expected. It's the first match of the of the um, tournament for both of these teams of the NCAA tournament. Probably just kind of shaking out some nerves, trying to find their way. Newsom serving it up for the Lions and out of play. The Lions coming out fire and they're showing reason why they're in this tournament, Meredith. That's absolutely right. And, and you talked about the turnaround that this program has made. The first time that they've been Southland Conference champions and the first time they've been in this tournament. Again, swinging hard, being aggressive. Here's Landfair just has to do a little soft tap over the top. Set up here for Hidalgo and the Gophers defense showing up. Shaftmaster and, and Carter Booth up at the net in the middle there. Yeah, I mean, that's a very big block in front of Hidalgo. And so she's going to need to do a good job of swinging higher off those hands if she's trying to use those. Otherwise, she's going to get ha to get crafty around the block. The Gophers defense knows that they have to shut down Newsom and Hidalgo leading the team in kills. And they did it right there. An awkward hit. Oh, Shaftmaster keeping that one in play. Wenis just has to push it over. Tulis over to Hidalgo and the Gophers defense once again, Shaftmaster over there. Shaftmaster's racking up the block. She and Erica Davis are absolutely right there, ready to go. It's it's a out of system ball, so they know it's headed in that direction and they're gonna be all over that. A lot of players on this Gopher squad have some tournament experience. Maybe that's going to help them out today. Obviously, we talked about this is the Lions' first appearance, and the Gophers' defense, three straight points up there at the net. This time, Walker and Erica Davis. Absolutely. The Minnesota's block is proving really, really strong right now. And look, this is a very sizable team, and I mentioned the distinct size advantage versus um, southeastern Louisiana. They've got to continue to try and find ways around the block or off of the hands. And Everett trying to set it up there for the Lions, and they couldn't get the ball over the net. So the Gophers pick up yet another point, and they extend the scoring run now to four. That's right. Minnesota, you know, it looks like they're starting to get comfortable. They're in the right positions defensively. It looks like they're reading the setter really well. McGraw serves it over Hidalgo. And look at that. Find there, Hidalgo. Looking for that open court in that back corner. Great job right there. That's right. Adalgo does a very nice job of finding the small seam in the block there. Erica Davis was not hip to hip with Melanie Schaffmaster and um, Cicely Adalgo is able to, to, to make use of that seam. Gracie Duplishin to serve it up for the Lions. That one looks like it's out of play and it is a serving error for the Southeast Louisiana Lions. Look, Southeastern Louisiana, um, they we heard they're going to try and serve aggressively and keep Minnesota out of system and off balance. They have 193 aces on the season, but with their stated aggression, they do risk a few errors. And Minnesota picking up yet another point. They are streaking right now. Southeast Louisiana staying in this one. This one's definitely not on play. We're still, we're not even halfway through this first set. That's right. Here's Melanie Shaftmaster. Serves it up. Duplishin finds a dog on that right side. Great play by Shaftmaster. Wenis over to Wooker. What a block right there by the Lions. Hannah Brewer on that right side. Fantastic play. It looks like it just came out of bounds. She had her hands up ready to go. It looks like it just flew out of bounds um, on that one. But really, a, a better point for, for Southeastern Louisiana. Yeah, just off Brewer's hands. So Minnesota got that last point, actually, and then the Lions come back here, a serving error by the Gophers. So the Lions down 10-7 early in this first set of the first round of the NCAA National Tournament here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We will be here also for the second round tomorrow. The winner of this match will play the uh, Northern Iowa Panthers. That's right. Addy Vidrine there with a, a missed serve. Um, for southeastern Louisiana, again, you you risk you know more missed serves by being aggressive, but that's sort of the the risk that you take. So here's Rachel Kill Kelly, Duplishin, great block there by Landfair. Kill Kelly in the back, Shaftmaster setting it up on the other side for Jenna Wenis, and there was a diving attempt there by the Lions, but the Gophers pick up the point. Jenna Wenis has um, moved over to the right side this season for Minnesota. She was an outside hitter on the left side, and this season moved over to the right side as McKenna Walker has then come in on the left side, and she's really done a nice job of adjusting over to that right side. It is a very different game over there, and she's done a good job. Here's Shaftmaster setting it up. Erica Davis looked like she took it away from Landfair. 
on the other side. Great job there. And that ball's going to go out of bounds, so the Lions pick up the point. It looks like that was Carly Wilkerson potentially picking up that point. Yeah, Carly Wilkerson, the grad student from Springfield, Louisiana. Um, you know, she has 212 kills on the season. Add another one to that tally. I love the aggressive swing. Third on the team with 2.26 kills per set. Here's Landfair, a little tip shot. She is great at doing this. She'll have a couple of those a game. You know, she's going to keep you on your toes. One of the reasons that Taylor Lamphere is the Big Ten Player of the Year is because of all the kills she racks up. But the way that she does it is by using all shots available to her. So she'll roll shots, she'll tip, she'll hit high off the hands, she'll hit a sharp cross. She, she's quite talented. Duplish in over there to Kaylee Newsom. It looks like the Lions will pick up the point that went off a gopher player. That's right. Kaylee Newsom doing a good job of swinging off the hands. That's what we're talking about. When you're undersized, you can't swing right into the middle of the block. It's going to come down on your side every time. But if you swing high hands, you have that chance of making it undefendable. Ariana Ebert serves it up for the Lions. Awkward miscommunication there by the Gophers, so the Lions pick up yet another point. Yeah, Ar Ariana Ebert coming in and, and uh, acting as the second setter for the Lions, the Lady Lions, and um, certainly that, that aggressive serve worked nicely for her. Ebert serve. Shaftmaster to set it behind her to Wenis. Good return there by Ebert. Minnesota keeps it in play. Here's Landfair, throws it down. That's two lists, and the Lions could not get to it out of play, so Minnesota comes back with a point of their own. Yeah, just a bit of miscommunication there between Ibear and, and Boyne. You could see they were both kind of going for that ball. They just didn't know who, who was doing it. Ibear keeps it in play over there to Newsome, and Minnesota picks up the point. We've got a timeout here on the floor as the score is 15-10. Minnesota in the lead against Southeastern Louisiana. Listen, I think Southeastern Louisiana, for their first time in the tournament, is doing a great job coming out hard and swinging away and being aggressive. Well, yeah, and the one thing here for Minnesota, too, you know, we already talked about how this is McCutcheon's last season. He's, they got a lot of experience, this squad in the tournament, and McCutcheon knows what this team needs to do to pull off a win against a team that's super excited like Southeastern Louisiana in their first tournament ever, like you talked about. Yeah, that's right. Hugh McCutcheon in his 11th season with the Golden Gophers, his final season with the Gophers, the second winningest coach in program history. And you're right, he has a ton of experience in the tournament. So does this Minnesota squad. And so he is really probably trying to focus them on staying course. Right, you've got a game plan. You need to stick with the game plan, regardless of how things, you know, how far a lead you build or what what's going on. You stick with the game plan until it doesn't serve you any longer. And so, he is likely talking to them about that, making sure they stay disciplined. It's only the first round. They wait, want to make a long run, but you don't make a long run without getting through the first round. So Minnesota, halfway through this first set, up 15 to 10. They are leading this blocks category four to zero. And this is a team that's fifth in the nation, Meredith, with 2.82 blocks per set. And that's that height that Coach White for the uh, for the Lions was talking about that they have to take away from the Gophers. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, they've got, the Gophers have, uh, you know, a couple of really talented middle blockers, a, a number of them actually between Nia Gross and Erica Davis and Carter Booth. But then their right side blockers and Melanie Schaffmesser and Jenna Wenis, their left side blockers and Taylor Landfair and McKenna Wooker. So they've got kind of solid weapons at the net and, and Southeastern Louisiana is just gonna have to continue to deal with that. Carter Booth, you just saw on your screen, was named to the All Big Ten first team for this year. Great middle blocker, just like Meredith said, and a fantastic swing right there from the Lions offense. <laughs> Kept Kill Kelly off of her feet. Kaylin Newsom, really, really strong. She She's uh, kind of been in and out of, of southeastern Louisiana. She transferred and then came back. And her older sister, volleyball runs the family, her older sister, Jaden Newsom, plays for Iowa State. Newsom serve. There's Kill Kelly in the back. Shaftmaster serving it up for Carter Booth, and she just missed the net. Probably missed time that jump there, Meredith. Yeah, you know, I, I like the run by Minnesota. I, I, Carter Booth, when they get her involved, they're a better team overall because they've got more options. I think Melanie Shaftmaster, she tried to push that one in there and force it in there. It was just too low for Carter Booth to really make use of. Keelan Newsom serves it. Kill Kelly with a diving, diving effort. Shaftmaster. Oh, what a great dig there by Ainsley Tulis. 
Newsom just has to push it over. There's McGraw back over to land for the Big Ten Player of the Year. Oh, the Lions somehow keep it in play. What a fantastic effort there. Carter Booth finds that outside, near that sideline, gets some space, and the Gophers pick up a great point on a fantastic rally. That's right. A really good rally by Southeastern Louisiana. They did a really nice job of keeping that ball alive. I mentioned the Gophers are better when they have Carter Booth in on the action, so Melanie Schaffmaster is going to work hard to push her, especially in transition. And a serving error right there for Taylor Landfair. That's something that the Gophers are going to have to stay away from. If they want to just get away with this one, that's, that's going to keep the Lions in this thing. Yeah, that's exactly right. Both teams with two service errors right now. There's two of the serving up. Landfair in the back. Shaftmaster over. A little push out from Wooker. Great save. That's Bear. Tulis over the net. Wenis looks like they're going to go back to Carter Booth who throws it down. There it is. I mean, Carter Booth on that slide with one blocker and, and an undersized blocker in that situation. I mean, she's nearly automatic. It's a perfect pass, perfect set, and Carter Booth has a number of shots available to her and takes that cross court. Hidalgo. Back to Hidalgo. There's McGraw in the back for the Gophers. Shaftmaster just has to hit it over. Newsome. Bear, and then great defense there by the Gophers as they keep another point here. Really nice job by McKenna Walker on that block. She stayed very disciplined. She stayed home and kept that left hand pressing back into the court. So we're going to get a timeout here on the floor. Gophers up 18-13. They still have a five-point margin right now in this first set after that first timeout that we took. So far, this game has been energetic. Minnesota, who's the two seed, so the obvious favorite, is playing a great game against Southeastern Louisiana, a team that was so excited to come here. We got here early, and I watched this Lions team. They looked like they were just so excited to be here, and they showed that they have so much team chemistry with all that communication they have just during warm-ups. That's exactly right. They looked at ease. They looked excited. They looked energetic, and, and that is no doubt due to Coach Jeremy White. We're taking a look at him talking to his team right now. Coach Jeremy White is in his fourth season at Southeastern Louisiana, um, and in 2020, he was named the Southland Conference Katrinka Joe Crawford Coach of the Year. So he's certainly done a really marvelous job to turn around this program. I believe before he got there, their record was something like 5-55 and 55 in the seasons leading up to his arrival. And he immediately turned the program around and four season, you know, in their fourth season, they're here at the tournament. So he certainly has done a nice job with this team and, and they will respond. They are not going to just roll over. They have fight in them. We saw that as we watched them earlier today. Well, I don't know if you guys didn't hear that, what Meredith said. This team was 5-55 and 55 the two seasons before Coach White took over. They were 2-27 and 27 the season before he came at the helm here. So this Southeast Louisiana team, this has been a long time coming for them to get to this national tournament. They are so excited to be here. And they're showing they're not going to go down without a fight here. Right. This is a great team and led by Kaylin Newsom. Yeah, right now their, their biggest issue is that they're just making too many errors and not killing enough balls. They've got six errors on 25 attempts and they're only hitting 0-4-0. There's Newsom, the bump. Boyne over. Newsom just has to hit it over. There's McGraw coming into the middle. Shaft match is going to serve it behind her to Wenis, and that one's just a little out of play. You can see that setting up just a little too much power there from Wenis' hit. Yeah, she says, my bad, as she comes into the, to the lineup. But again, Southeastern Louisiana staying disciplined, doing a good job, um, making sure they don't chase that ball down. Gracie Duplishin will serve it up for the Lions. Shaftmaster over to McKenna Walker, and that one's gone out of play off of a Lion player. Yeah, that one absolutely came flying. McKenna Walker, the true freshman, um, she is the number one recruit in the country coming into Minnesota for her first year here and has absolutely performed as advertised when she's been playing. And for her hard work, she was named to the Big Ten All-Freshman team this season. Been a great player for this McCutcheon offense. But so has Tulis and the rest of these Lions players. They've been playing great so far in this first set, and they haven't let this thing get away from them. Yeah, Hidalgo had a nice kill there. I mean, she, you know, interestingly, Minnesota mistimed their block, and she was able to squeeze it through that malformed block. Hidalgo hitting 249 coming into this match. Here's Shaftmaster. Oh, what a tomahawk hit there. Somehow the Lions keep this one in play. McGraw's just going to serve it up here. When is, oh, what a great block by the Lions. Landfair just has to hit it over. There's Tulis. 
Duplishin. Oh, great block by the Gophers, but it's going to go off of one of the Gophers players out of bounds. That's right. I mean, credit to Southeastern Louisiana. They played really tough that point. They did a really nice job of playing defense, digging balls, and then squeezing that ball through is uh, number four, Carly Wilkerson. Landfair with the dig. Shaftmaster throws it down to Wenis. What a hard-hitting swing right there. Really strong swing by Wenis on that cross-court swing. You could see she's just ran right inside this outside block and absolutely carves that ball. That's fall, that ball fell at like 15 feet. That was good. Shaftmaster, a player that can get rallies going for the Gophers. And with a lot of fans here at Maturi Pavilion, that could be dangerous for this Lions team. But that has other plans for Kaylin Newsom. She comes back here, a player that's just like Taylor Lanfair in terms of kills in the stat column, mm -hmm. goes off a Gopher player, and the Lions get a point right back. Yeah, there she is, Kaylin Newsom. She had four kills. She's now got five kills on eight swings. She's swinging. She's hitting 500 thus far in the match. So Southeastern Louisiana is going to want to continue to feed her the ball. Here's Shaft after serving it up for Erica Davis. And it looks like it went off of a Lions player, so the yep. Gophers are going to pick up the point. Yeah, it looks like there was a touch there that was called. Um, Erica Davis knew it right away. She was in and available as an option for Minnesota. Elise McGee coming into the game for the Golden Gophers. Duplishin over Newsom, and then great block by the Gophers. Looks like they're going to go to Newsom again. Throws it down. Oh, she just finds that wow. space every time, doesn't she, Meredith? Really, really nice job by Kaylin Newsom. She chipped that shot. That is a really hard shot to defend, especially when it's off speed. But even more than that, I really love Crispin Adams' coverage of Kaylin Newsom's first swing. That is so important when you're facing a big block. You've got to have your defenders under there covering and re recovering that ball so you can get another swing on it. Yeah, I've seen some stuff from Kaylin Newsom in the past, but seeing her in person, it's just completely different right. experience. She's unreal. And speaking of unreal, here's Carter Booth right in the middle, lob it up to a six foot seven player. Usually good things are gonna happen. Absolutely right. Carter Booth has just been marvelous. She didn't uh, necessarily start the season in the starting lineup, but has worked her way into it and has absolutely been thrilling. She, she was not only on the All Big Ten freshman team, but she was also just on the All Big Ten team, which is fabulous as a freshman. Great play right there by McGraw. Going to go over to Landfair. There's that tip shot that she just really loves. Tula's going to set it up for Lions. There's a Landfair. Great play by Tulis. Bear over to Newsom. Throws it down. And it's off a of Gophers player. The Lions pick up the point. Yeah, wow. I mean, Kayla Newsom is just swinging away. And you know, actually that point is set up by I Bear, who does a really good job defending. She picked up that tip kind of in the middle and then allows her team to continue to play, is putting up some good sets as well. Kayla Newsom served great diving play by Kill Kelly. Landfair, softish hit. All the way over. Oh, did that one stay in play there? Yeah. It did. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, yeah, and there was a touch. You can see, um, oh, I, wow, I bear absolutely pushed that set so far. Watch that set. She's almost all the way over to the right pin and gets that oh, ball almost me. all the way outside. Really pushed that ball nicely. These li this Lions offense, they are finding open space in quarters on this Gopher defense. Here's Shaftmaster over to Booth, throws it oh. down to that one Yes, it did, right on that line. It had to have been. My goodness, that was with <laughs> authority. I really love the action that both of these teams are taking. They're great aggressive swings. I mean, Carter Booth, very well timed. Melanie Shaftmaster puts a beautiful ball in her hitting window. Here's the Lions. Bear setting it up. Little push shot from Adams. Oh, little Wooker with a push shot of her own. Bear. Wooker's there. Here's McGraw. Lanfair just has to hit it over. Tulis. Great block by the Gophers. Oh, diving play. Is that a pancake save? Yes, it is. Shaftmaster just has to hit it over. Bear. Great block again. Oh, this rally is insane. Are you kidding me? There's McGraw. Shaft match. Oh, the no look. Oh, you are kidding me. 
rally. That was insane. That was the best rally I've ever seen when I've been watching volleyball. I, I am mean, not joking. This Minnesota crowd loved that point, and Melanie Schaffmaster absolutely doing a wonderful job of taking advantage. We're, there's a challenge on the floor here. You can tell the Gopher players are a little bit wiped. Melanie Schaffmaster's like, good Lord, I could use a break. What but a really nice job. Give me all those digs that those oh, Lions gosh. players had. I cannot believe it. There was a pancake from the Gophers. Oh, my gosh. I didn't think that that was going to end. That's right. And, you know, you know, the Lions are doing such a good job now of covering their hitters. And that is the difference maker between the beginning of the set and the end. So oh, they're just, just take a look at this pancake right here. That looks like McKenna Walker. Yeah. I think they're taking a look to see if she got all those fingers on. We're going to roll that back. Thank you very much, team upstairs. Yeah, it looks like I think she got those. Uh, uh, fingers under there. Yeah, it does look up to me as well. Um, but certainly the referees will take a look at it. And, you know, Jeremy White, a good challenge for him. We're a little phased. We just and it was down. We were wrong. Connor, so, we're over on our so, challenge calls. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So it looks like the ball hit the ground when yes. Walker was going for that save. That's right. Even then, I mean, the refs are still letting that go on. That was such a great rally. And for, what's important here for the Lions is that that's not the 24th point for Minnesota. That's not the set point anymore. You got it. Now Louisiana's only down two here. Yes, exactly. The Lady Lions are down to 21-23 here in this first set. They're trying to figure out, they're making sure where they are in rotation. They don't want to be out of rotation. So Coach Jeremy White's making sure he's got the right server. So let me tell you something here, folks. What they're going to go down in the rule, in the uh, scorebook here is an attacking error by Melanie Shaftmaster. So they must have saw something else from that replay that we showed you, that something was against Melanie Shaftmaster. So that's the reason why the Lions pick up the point after all of that chaos. Here's Landfair. Shaftmaster, she just says, let me do it myself again. Good. And there's that no looker that she does all the time. That's right, exactly. Yeah, Melanie Shaftmaster, we've talked about this. She is not afraid to um, be offensive as a setter. And certainly that point was no different. Southeastern Louisiana, Coach uh, Jeremy White has another timeout. Why not use it, right? It's time to um, buckle down. Uh, Three-point deficit, Southeastern Louisiana, 21, Minnesota, 24. That's Melanie Schaffmaster's first kill of the game. She's known for her assist, uh, assisting, obviously, as a setter. She's averaging nearly 10 and a half assists a set. That's second in the Big Ten Conference, uh, Meredith. That's just insane. That's a huge number. Yeah, Melanie Schaffmaster has been a contributor since she set foot on campus here at the University of Minnesota. And she's done a really nice job. Um, I think something like eighth all-time at Minnesota in yeah. terms of assists. Speaking of all-timers, CeCe McGraw, third all-time in digs. We're going to take a look back here at that play just two points ago. McKenna Wooker had that attempting pancake save, but they saw something on Melanie Shaftmaster attacking Eric. Maybe she touched the net a couple hits ago. We'll see here. And then McGraw with a fantastic save. Melanie Shaftmaster then puts it down. She just had that no look or a point ago that counted, but that's the one from two points ago where the referees awarded Southeast Louisiana the point. And if they wouldn't have gotten the point there, that would have been the set this last point that Minnesota just had. So instead, 24-21 Lady Lions down here with three points to go. Melanie Shaftmaster getting a look right there. We already said she's averaging 10 and a half nearly assists a set. She's got 13 in the first set, just light numbers for her. Yeah, 13 assists and three blocks, like already. <laughs> That's really good. So we'll resume some play here. Oh, miscommunication, but great play here by Adams. There's Erica Davis. Oh, just off the top of the net and rolls. Unlucky play for the Lions there. It looked like Addie Vadreen was trying to put that in the open space on that left side of the floor of the Gophers. Minnesota picks up that last point. They take set number one in this first round matchup here. Southeast Louisiana Lions, Minnesota Golden Gophers. We'll be back with more on ESPN+. Plus. isn't going to win the height battle. So they're going to have to take a lot of swings and cover a lot of balls so that they keep themselves in play so that they can continue to be aggressive. They certainly improved their hitting percentage over the course of that first set, and they've got more that they can break. 
Well, let me tell you something, Meredith. The one player that stuck out to me, of course, is Kalen Newsom. That's who they're going to have to ride throughout this entire match. Minnesota knows that, but Newsom still got seven kills. She's leading the team. The next best is Wilkerson with two. They're going to have to keep feeding her the ball. They're staying close in this one. We can see that it's anyone's game at this point. They're, they're not going down without a fight. Yeah, and you can see that Minnesota block working really, really hard. They certainly outblocked um, Southeastern Louisiana five blocks to none. And so you saw a lot of those in that highlight package. You didn't notice Kaylin Newsom getting blocked. Yeah. So that's right. They need to continue to feed her. And then um, as the set wore on, they did a better job of covering those blocks. So to start off, set two for the Lions, Addie Vadreen serves it up. And she has a service error. So not exactly what the Lions have in mind. That's their third service error already. They also had a blocking error. So that's another thing that this team's going to need to cut down on to stay in this game. That's right. There's... Great play there. Looks like when is it went out of bounds, so the Lions will even this one up at one apiece. Carly Wilkerson doing a nice job with her third kill there. Third, three kills on four swings for the Southeastern Louisiana Lady Lions. Hannah Brewer to serve for the Southeast Louisiana Lions. And another service error. Are you serious right now? That's two to start off this second set. Yeah, you know, we we, we know they're being aggressive. We know they're getting used to this gym still. But certainly, like you said, they, they're going to need to minimize errors. They just can't be giving points away to a very tough Minnesota squad. Oh, just not able to get down there as Kayla Newsom. It looked like she had her feet just frozen in place and she didn't want to move and get down for that one. Yeah, I mean, it was a good serve, too, by Taylor Lanfair. You can see the bottom kind of falls out of that ball. A really nice float serve out of Lanfair. Lanfair to serve again. There's Newsom. Oh, Newsom, is anybody going to get there? Oh, what a save! Oh, my goodness, are you kidding me? Crispin Adams, Shaftmaster, over to Carter Booth. Tullis keeps it in play over by Carly Wilkerson. Shaftmaster going to set up. Oh, a fake by... Oh, my gosh. Booth with the fake. That got me over there on that other side. That was Paquetta Wooker. Yeah, absolutely. So that is what I mean when I say Carter, they're better when Carter Booth is in the match. She can pull blockers exactly like she did there. Crispin Adam stayed with Carter Booth, leaving a one-on-one -on -one for McKenna Wooker. Third straight serve from Landfair over to Newsom once again. The Gophers defense there, did they touch that? No, they did not. Gophers have a 4-0 run now to start off the second set. That's right. You know, Southeastern Louisiana needs to keep that ball in play. They need to keep their setter off of the net. That's going to be really important for them because she'll she's going to get eaten up if she has to go into the net like that. Landfair this time tries to dream. Newsome, when is keeping it in play, Shaftmaster going to set it up for Landfair, find some open space, oh, it's just out of bounds, looks like a little to the right of that uh, that line right there. Yeah, Taylor Landfair, when she's hitting that back row attack, really likes that away shot, you can kind of see her twist her thumb down and push that away shot, she loves that shot, just a little wide there. A bear to serve for the Lions, Shaftmaster sets it, Wooker. In the back is Vadreen. A bear over to Newsome. Great play by CeCe McGraw in that corner, all the way across. Oh, the Lions defense. Shaftmaster with the play. Oh my gosh, Landfair back over. Here's Tullin. A bear. Newsome. Oh, oh, Newsome again. Oh my gosh, A bear over the top. Shaftmaster over to Walker and the Gophers pick up a point on an incredible rally. What a rally is right. Wow. I, I'm just so impressed with Southeastern Louisiana. They don't yeah. quit. You can see A bear diving all over the place and Tullis diving all over the place and Newsom keeps swinging away and her team's <laughs> covering her. I mean, it's just really fun volleyball. There's Vadreen, Haybear over to Newsom, gonna try to find a corner. Gophers are there, Shaftmaster over to Wooker, great block there. Another block by the Lions. Oh my gosh, here comes Wenis, Haybear. That's gonna be Crispin Adams, Shaftmaster, Lanford right down the middle. Oh, she just came right down Main Street for that point. That's exactly right. I, we, we mentioned she loves that back row attack. Minnesota likes to use her on that back row attack because it gives them another option. And you can see here, again, a little bit of wrist away, but that time paints the line. It looked like Tullis pulled back last second. Maybe a little miscommunication in that back row there for the Lions. Here's Newsom. 
Hebert, Newsom, what a great hit. A tip there by Shaftmaster, who sets it up now for Wenis. And there on that other side is Kylie Boyne, it looks like, for the Lions. Yeah, absolutely. Boyne, Riley Boyne comes in here um, and does a really nice job swinging away at that, at that ball. Uh, over on the right side, finds the line. That's exactly what we, what we want to see. First time I think that we've said Riley Boyne's name. She's got a kill. Couple errors so far this game. Shaftmaster gonna set it up here for Walker. Oh my gosh, Tullis took a shot and kept wow. that one in play. But the Lions pick up the point. That was insane. Wow, what a dig. That is a crazy great dig there by, by Tullis. You can see her rubbing her chest there too. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh my gosh, what did yeah. I just take? Yeah, my goodness, great dig. And then Idal goes right there to take care of that point. Takes one for the team. Oh my gosh, Ainsley, tell us, what are you doing here to us? Erica Davis, Bear all the way across to Hidalgo, and just out of play there, it looks like the Gophers will pick up the point. Yeah, just out of bounds there by Hidalgo. She's swinging aggressively. Again, southeastern Louisiana is getting really scrappy on defense. Um, it's a good aggressive swing by Hidalgo. She's got to put the next one in and get, get herself going. There's Tullis. A bear all the way over Hidalgo. Oh, nice job splitting those gopher defenders in that back row there. That's exactly right. And on the block, you can see Hidalgo comes in and she has this big seam. And you this replay right here. That's a big giant seam for her to yeah. hit through between Erica Davis and Jenna Wenis. Ainsley Tullis to serve. Great dig by Wenis, who's going to get the return. Fantastic defense. Oh. So Minnesota will get called for yeah. a double there um, in, in that defense and, and, a, and a Lady Lions block there. It's, it, if you watch actually number two, Hannah Brewer, the sophomore middle, she's not all that tall, but she is very jumpy. She has a great vertical, and so she jumps really high there in the middle when she's blocking. Yeah, and she leads the team with 107 blocks, Meredith, on the season, and there she is right there uh -huh. blocking one. She sets it up, Bear. Oh, they're going to go all the way to a doggo. Great block right over here by McKenna Walker on our side. You know what, McKenna Walker, that was a fabulous block um, by, against the Southeastern Lady Lions. And Erica Davis, you'll see after this block, gives her a big hug because Erica was not in position. <laughs> and so she said, thank you very much. Gophers up 9-6 early in this second set. Minnesota took that first set, 25-20. Hidalgo. And... Just some awkward hits there from the Gophers. So the Lions will come back here with a point of their own. Yep, and Hannah Brewer, like we just mentioned, um, who leads their team in blocks, she has 117 kills on the season. So she's not, and she's not set a whole lot, but there they make really good use of her. Oh, they're just setting her up there. Great block <laughs> once again by Hannah Brewer. Tullis. Over to that opposite side where Carly Wilkerson is and just out of play there. Yeah, it's a good swing by Carly Wilkerson down the line, but the Gophers are disciplined. They're not going to play that ball, and, and they want to continue to push points on their side. Elise McGee coming into the game for the Gophers. So is Carter Booth. Wilkerson hits it over. Oh, no. Awkward play there by Rachel Kilkelly. She knows she wants to have that one back for sure. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, southeastern Louisiana is excited to get that point. Minnesota, the bench was saying, out, 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 don't touch it. Uh, but Wilkerson got away with it and yeah. got herself a kill. Kilkelly calls off McGraw. Here's Landfair. That height on that spike is insane. Here's Newsom. McGraw going to set it up behind her for Landfair, and it's just out of play a little too much. I think it's the second time that she's done that now where she's put too much power on those swings. Yeah, just a little long. And listen, when you are a Taylor Landfair, right, she's used to playing in the Big Ten and usually against a lot taller block. Yeah. And so it is a different look visually for you. Oh, my gosh. Not for Carter Booth, I yeah, guess. There's Carter Booth again. <laughs> We've talked about her so many times. You, you say she's this team so much better with her in the lineup. You see that whole Six foot seven frame coming right in the middle to throw that down. That's exactly right. Oh, service error right here by Jenna Wenis. So the Lions 
all of a sudden, they're down one. I don't know if I've just not been watching the score or something, Meredith, but this one is super, super close. I mean, that's it. It's like they're just going to be aggressive. They're just going to continue to go after it, and I think they're doing just a really beautiful job. Kill Kelly. Chapman is going to set it up behind her. Looks like Carter Booth was there. You can see that all day, but then she just finds that open space on the floor on that lion side. Yeah, and Carter Booth, that she's just hitting over the block there. That is really hard to defend, and she is absolutely magnificent when it comes to this slide. She and Melanie Shaftmaster have figured out their tempo, and they do a beautiful job running that play. Just knew some coming into the play there was Duplishin. When is Shaftmaster going to set it up for Walker and off of a Lions player? It looks like that was Gracie Duplishin that went off of and the Lions. Yeah. Give the Gophers a point here. And she was running all the way across the mm -hmm. court from having set that prior ball and just a little bit out of position to dig that ball. Kayla Newsom to return the serve from Landfair all the way across over there. What a great play by Carly Wilkerson on that Lions offense. Absolutely. Carly Wilkerson with her fifth kill on seven swings, only one error. So she is producing at, at a 571 hitting percentage. They need to continue to find ways to feed her the ball as well as Kayla Newsom. Let me tell you something here, folks. Kayla Newsom had seven kills coming into the second set. She doesn't have a single one. We thought that she had to ride this whole offense, but there's been other players helping out there's tools oh my gosh a pancake oh my gosh are you kidding me Kayla Newsom hits it over a fake there by Booth blocked by the Lions oh this one no way it's gonna stay in place Shaftmaster with just a little soft tap there a bear all the way over to Kayla Newsom is it in oh late call it's out of bounds just barely the Gophers pick up that point oh my word just out of bounds what a point you know certainly Ooh. certainly Newsom has not been as much of an offensive factor here but her, her the rest of her teammates are stepping up and their defense is absolutely stepping up here in this second set. Oh, great dig there by Hidalgo. Kept in play in just that third hit. Just a little miscommunication. Great plays there on the return by the line, but they just couldn't get it back over in return. So Yeah, absolutely. And there's a timeout here on the floor. 15-11. I believe this is the same time we had the timeout on the floor last set, too. It was this 15-11 margin, I believe. And, and certainly Southeastern Louisiana stayed in it, right? We've talked about this. They're going to keep being aggressive. We, we talked. And absolutely, Minnesota will, will continue to keep pressure on a, as they think about what they want to do here in this second set. They cannot let up. Well, ESPN Plus is allowing us to stream this game. And then we've got, we have joined Sam Gore, Paul Sunderland, Jennifer Hoffman for this fifth set. They'll have whip around coverage from all 16 sites. I repeat, all 16 sites, folks. So stay up to date with all first and second round matches. You can stream it right now on ESPN Plus. This isn't the only game happening right now, Meredith. So stay up with ESPN Plus. That's exactly right. <laughs> Connor, this is my favorite time of the year. I love the NCAA tournament. <laughs> it's, there's no such thing as December madness. But if there were, this would be it and so I just love I love the sport of volleyball has grown so much and there are so you know it's it continues to grow and more and more fans come to this sport more and more players come to this sport and so this is the best of the best right here it's a 64 team tournament there's been a couple upsets already in the tournament um, I just love this time of year it's so fun well I think we are just so grateful to be have to be able to have this chance to be able to call some great games like this you know we have that Florida State, Northern Iowa, huge game. Northern right. Iowa with the sweep. I, was, I don't think a lot of people were expecting that, but their crowd travels. Oh my gosh, they are so loud. They get this team going, and once they got a little run going, it's hard to stop them. Yes, exactly, and they're here now watching this match because yes. they've got to prepare for tomorrow night. That's This is the tournament. You can celebrate, but only for so long because you got another match in front of you. So we are back here after that time out. Of course, we've been here with you. Gophers up 15-11. This has been a fantastic matchup. Looks like Crispin Adams coming around the other side. The Lions, what a great offensive setup there out of the timeout. Yeah, check that out. Really good job. Um, a touch there on Minnesota. Great swing. It was interesting. They brought Kayla Newsom inside there on this. So if you see here, she's not hitting outside. She's going to hit this two ball coming in, and Minnesota's block not ready for it. And it looked like one of the Gopher players might have took that ball to the face there on that when we were rolling out of that replay. So Kayla Newsom 
McGraw returning it. Oh, that shaft master, that's the second time she's done that. We talked about she'll do that to you in southeast Louisiana. Has to be aware that shaft master will turn and do those no looks at any time. Absolutely. What I love about when Mel Melanie does it is that she chooses her moment. She doesn't do it all the time. She's very choiceful about when she chooses to use that dump. Very smart player. Here's Newsom all the way over to Hidalgo, and looks like Taylor Lanfair let that one go, but it was inbound, or it was out of, out of bounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hidalgo is swinging away, just again, a little bit long. She's trying to find her rhythm out there, trying to get into her into her kind of rhythm. She, she's currently hitting negative on the night, four kills, five errors. Great dig by Newsom. Little tap. Oh, Wooker is there on that go for defense to block that little tap shot. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. This block is really big. And while Boyne tried to sneak it past uh, uh, Wooker, she said she wasn't going to let that happen. So Minnesota up 17-12 or 18-12 now to this 3-0 scoring run coming out of the timeout. Southeast Louisiana had that first point, but Minnesota's gone on a little bit of a run here. Southeast Louisiana taking the timeout. Coach White wanted to talk some stuff over here with the Gophers, or with the Lions, excuse me. And make sure they don't let this one slip out of hand because the last thing you want right here, Meredith, in this NCAA tournament is to go down 2-0 in sets. Yeah, and I mean, really the difference is in how these teams are playing offensively. So, um, you know, I mentioned Southeastern Louisiana. They hit 184 in the first set. They're hitting 083 in this set. And that has to do with, you know, sort of getting blocked quite a number of times and, and the errors they make. You know, Jeremy White will, will certainly talk to them about kind of altering their game plan so that they can be more offensively productive here in this in this timeout. Minnesota, on the other hand, in the first set, they hit 333. They're only hitting 192 in this set as well. And that is certainly because Southeastern Louisiana's defense has really stepped up. Well, we talk, you talked about the hitting percentage just now. Overall, for the so far this entire match, Minnesota hitting 274. And for perspective, Southeast Louisiana hitting 145. Yep. you got to think that the numbers dropped a little bit just from this set, right? Yeah, certainly both have. And, and you mentioned Minnesota hitting 274 on the match, but only 192 right now. A huge factor in that is the number of digs that Southeastern Louisiana has. Right, right now, they are out digging Minnesota 25 to 19. Team. We've had some incredible rallies, lots of digs on both sides. The defenses have really stepped up. Here's Abair, Crispin Adams puts it down, but the did the Gophers yeah. touch that? Yeah, it went down on yeah. their side of the net. You've got it. So Abair squeezed it into Crispin Adams, kind of set her up there, and Crispin Adams able to squeeze it inside of the Gopher block. Ainsley Tullis. Serves it. The return from Taylor Lanfair, who's passed it to Shaftmaster. A little tip shot here by Jenna Wenis. Fantastic setup there by Minnesota. That's right. And we mentioned Jenna Wenis started her career over on the left side um, and even started this season on the left side. So she's very comfortable taking sets over there. Minnesota got a healthy six point lead entering this home stretch of the second set. Hidalgo to return, Bear over back to Hidalgo, great dig by McGraw, all the way across to Lanfair, oh, just off the top of the net, Wenis throws it down! <laughs> wow, Jenna Wenis absolutely took care of business, and you could see Tullis kind of charged the net like she was ready to dig, but she was not going to get in front of that one. And another timeout here. I think this time, once again, by Southeast Louisiana. So what Coach Wade drew up in that last time out wasn't working for him. So we'll see what they can do here coming up. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, right? Like, coaches have different strategies behind their timeouts. What I like is that Jeremy White's going to use all his timeouts. He's going to make sure that he gives his team the best shot at winning this match. Getting a look right there at Cicely Hidalgo. We said second on the team, averaging over three kills a set so far. She's got four in this match, but she also has five errors, and that's something that this Lions team needs to clean up, and they're letting this one kind of get away from them all of a sudden. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. She just hasn't been able to kind of find her rhythm. Like you said, she's averaging over three kills a set, 3.31 kills a set on the season, hitting 249. So this is abnormal for her to perform this way. She just really hasn't been able to get her rhythm and a lot of it is finding your connection with your setter feeling comfortable out on the floor certainly there's a lot of match left so she can still turn that around southeastern louisiana needs to continue to give her chances to do that well and you 
see why they keep passing it to her. She's second on the team with 368 and a half points. They're gonna look to her. That's they, right. I don't think Coach White cares all that much. Of course he cares about the errors, but whether she makes errors or not, they're gonna keep feeding her the ball. She's such a big part of this offense. Yeah, and she's actually, she's been uh, really productive for this team. Last year as a freshman, she was the Southland Conference Freshman of the Year. Um, and actually before she came here, she was the Gatorade Player of the Year for the state of Louisiana. Well, I said that Hidalgo has those four uh, kills so far. There's right there. That's Kayla Newsom has eight kills leading this Lions squad so far. Hidalgo, Bear back to Hidalgo. They did that just before the timeout, and this time it works out. There it is, right? They're going to keep feeding Hidalgo. you got to continue to give her chances to work her way back into that match. Bear does just that with a nice little bump set. I think that's three straight offense possessions we've seen. Hidalgo return over to Abair. Abair setting up Hidalgo. Something that they want to do offensively. Here's Shaftmaster setting up Taylor Landfair. Is that one in? Oh, it's just a little bit out. That From where we are sitting, that looks really close to being on the line. Yeah, it was definitely out. Minnesota not challenging it. Um, it but yeah, again, kind of hitting a little bit long, Taylor Landfair is. Great diving play by Rachel Kill. Kelly McGraw going to keep it up. Lanfair just has to tap it over. Great diving effort here by Duplishin. Great block by Erica Davis, but that's just going to go that's off and bounce. out of bounds. So the Lions pick up another point. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, it, when you're blocking, if you are getting looks that you're not used to seeing, like this one, you can see Erica Davis and Taylor Lanfair are right there, well positioned, but they've got to time their block appropriately, and they've got to wait a little bit. It's just out of rhythm. Oh, my goodness. Taylor Lanfair, that is just unfair. Wide open middle space right there, and she executes that perfectly. Really nice job, and you can see it's right in that seam, and what Jeremy White is asking his team to do is I need you to fill into that seam. I need you to tuck into that seam and dig that ball. And that's exactly what Taylor Lanfair wants coming off that hit where she had a little too much power and she comes back with a point. Duplishin tapped off the hands of Carter Booth and Taylor Lanfair was there as well. And I'll stay in that Minnesota zone so the Lions pick up the point. Yeah, exactly. Hannah Brewer, again, a nice little option. We, we, you know, we mentioned she doesn't get set a ton but has been pretty effective thus far. Kill Kelly, they're gonna go to Shaftmaster every single time. Holy smokes, was that Jenna Wes just out of nowhere? That's right, they've, they've uh, clearly Minnesota is working hard to establish their middle and to use witness as, as that right side option. They've used her quite a bit. Um, that is her seventh kill on the night on 14 attempts. Side with Carter Booth now for a team lead on that seven kills. Here's Duplishin behind her, great block by Landfair and Booth. Duplishin once again setting up this time, Tullis. Duplishin gonna try the other side. Did it go off the Gophers player? It did not. Just way too much pop on that one from Carly Wilkerson. Yeah, Wilkerson trying. What I love about that play is Southeastern Louisiana's mixing it up. Duplishin is dishing the ball everywhere, using all of her options, and they continue to swing away. Minnesota just too much. So here's Kaylin Newsom over to Duplishin, back over to Newsom. Oh my gosh, did, okay, that one went out. I was gonna say, if Minnesota keeps that one play, that would've been crazy. Off of McGraw, Lions pick up the point. Yep, that's right. And Kaylin Newsom records another kill. Important to get her back in the match. She's been a little quiet this second set, only two kills, mm -hmm. um, but now has nine on the evening. Leading both teams with those nine kills. McGraw calls off kill Kelly Shaftmaster with a no look, and it's good. Beautiful, wonderful job by Minnesota. You love to see it, and, and they're just playing pretty clean there. I mean, that is a beautiful pass. Shaftmaster takes advantage of it. Set point, Gophers. Gopher fans all on their feet in Maturi Pavilion. Taylor Landfair to serve. Oh, unlucky roll for the Lions. Duplishin. That's Newsome. Here's Shaftmaster setting up for Carter Booth. Great block by Newsome. Oh, sh she can't believe that it's called for the Gophers either. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you, a really interesting point there at the end. You can see this replay. So Carter Booth, you know, Newsom is like, I can't believe I even touched that, but it went out of bounds. And so, um, again, Carter Booth just incredibly effective for these Minnesota Golden Gophers, leading her team with eight kills uh, so far through two sets. Minnesota leading two sets to none. Minnesota takes that first one, 25-18, took that first one, 25-21, up 2-0. And we'll be back with some more volleyball on ESPN+. Up set number three with a point in their favor.
And there's the eighth block of the night. Taylor Lanfair beautifully done um, blocking that. You know, this is important. Minnesota up two sets to nothing. They're not going to want to let this set drop um, because they need to head on to tomorrow night. That's their goal. And Kill Kelly serves it over to Hidalgo. Just an awkward hit off of her chest. Her, her forearms right there. The Gophers start off both points here in this third set. That's right. Rachel Kill Kelly, a defensive specialist here for Minnesota. You know, she can go on serving runs for sure. Duplish it all the way over to Hidalgo. Shaftmaster over to McGraw. Here's Landfair. And just by Hidalgo. Might have went off of her, too. I couldn't see because it was a player in my way, but the Gophers picked up the point. It looked pretty clean, and that was a really crafty shot. Not high speed, but right there painting the line. Hidalgo. Duplishin. Oh, fantastic diving play by CeCe McGraw. Kill Kelly put a little too much on there. And look, yeah, just reached out of play. Taylor Lanfer was right there. Yeah, like you said, Kill Kelly just put a little too much on that. CeCe McGraw, a nice diving dig. Um, she was a bit out of position, still dove in there to dig that ball. So now Hidalgo will serve it up for the Lady Lions. There's McGraw behind it. Ahead to Jenna Wenis, who throws it down for the Golden Gophers. And Jenna Wenis, we've talked about this. They're really keying on her over on that right side, taking advantage of, uh, of where, what she's bringing over on that right side. She's got broken blocks. She's hitting big seams, big lines, doing a nice job out there for the Gophers. Wenis up to eight kills on the match, tied with teammate Carter Booth. There's Tulis, Duplishin, and... Carly Wilkerson threw it down, but just far to the right on that out-of-bounds line. Yeah, just out of bounds. Carly Wilkinson making a couple of errors, uh, you know, as we've kind of gone on in the match, but still six kills for the Lady Lions, second on the team behind Newsom. Duplishin to set it up here. Great block by Carter Booth, and the Lions have trouble keeping the ball up. Fantastic job by Carter Booth. You can see Southeastern Louisiana is there, ready to cover that ball. Just a bit of miscommunication, and, and Carter Booth puts another block on the board for Minnesota. Now at nine blocks tonight. The Gophers now on a 3-0 scoring run. Elise McGee to serve. Duplishin to set it up over. Landfair and Booth right there to block. Gophers defense showing up. That's block number 10, I believe, now for the Golden Gophers. That's Meredith. exactly right. And Southeastern Louisiana needs to take a timeout. They need to talk about this. They, You know, it's interesting. That this is kind of how the match started. And then they got better at covering their hitters and making sure that their hitters could swing aggressively because they were going to be there to pick it up off the block. Now they haven't picked them up off the block again. So it's kind of back to where they started this match. You know, Meredith, we talked about this, I think, pregame, or maybe it was the first set, but but coach Jeremy White for Southeast Louisiana, he talked uh, early in this week about the Gophers' height and how they block so many shots, and they want to slow this game down and stay away from getting their shots blocked. Well, you look at the stat sheet, Gophers 9, 10 blocks now. Um, this isn't just going exactly how he planned it. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, Minnesota is really sizable. They're very dominant. They play in a very tough conference in the Big Ten, so they are facing tough hitters all the time. I'm getting their hands up, trying to put put a block up in front of folks. And, you know, like we said, the Lady Lions, first time in this tournament, um, you know, looking to advance, but Minnesota looking to sweep them so that they can get ready for tomorrow night versus, you, the, versus uh, Northern Iowa. So you're getting a look right here at Southeast Louisiana for their scoring. They're led by Kayla Newsom right now. She's in double digits now with 10 kills on the game right there. There's Cecilia Hidalgo. Now you're getting a look at Ainsley Tullis. And this team's they they were pretty balanced, and then they were relying heavily on Kayla Newsom. Now they have some scores that are trying to help her out in that second set, but they just let that second one get away from them. Do they go back just to heavy on Newsom in this third set, Meredith? I mean, certainly if her hand is hot, they need to do that. But listen, like you said, they've got other Carly Wilkerson with six kills, Cicely Adalgo with five, Anna Brewer with uh, two, and Vadrine with two. Awkward hit by Kayla Newsom, who gets the ball right back. Oh, it's pancake by Shaftmaster. Are you kidding me? Jenna Wenis hits it over. Tullis keeps it alive. Kayla Newsom, great hit. Oh, awkward roll off the top of the net. Shaftmaster keeps it in play. Jenna Wenis, great block by the Lions. Shaftmaster gets the ball. Going to go all the way across to Taylor Lanford. The Lions defense once again showing up. Shaftmaster, awkward hit. Oh, the Lions, or <laughs> the Lions pick up the point. Awkward miscommunication there at the end of that rally by the Gophers. Yeah, absolutely. But the Lions block showing yeah. up for them there, right? Blocking it back, Minnesota having to deal with those blocks. 
um, and having to kind of be scrappy, and, and they win that point. Important for them, though, that ends a Gophers 4-0 run in this third set. Kill Kelly, Shaftmaster, Jenna Wannis throws it down. Great dig by Hidalgo. Just tapped over the top by Hannah Brewer. Shaftmaster behind her head. Jenna Wannis going to try it again off the top of the net. McGraw, Shaftmaster over to Taylor Lanfair, off of a Lions player and out of play. The Gophers pick up their eighth point. That is a really good swing by Taylor Lanfair. You can see she wipes that right off the hand of Wilkerson. Wilkerson's right hand hanging out there, and you can see she just absolutely, you know, wipes it off. There's no, no defending that ball. Hidalgo, great play right there. Kayla Newsom, absolute fire rocket right at Jenna Wenis's upper potty right there Ooh. and off route of bounds. I love that swing. <laughs> it was so good. Watch that. She goes across her body, sneaks it in there, and off of Jenna Wenis. Really nice swing by Newsom. I mean, she's just so good. It's just crazy to watch her. So here we are, McGraw, Shaftmaster gonna try for Jenna Wenis. That was a powerful swing and just a little too much on it. We saw it from Landfair. We've seen a couple from Wenis now too. A lot, a lot of power on those swings. This one goes out of play. Yeah, she's being really aggressive. I like an aggressive swing. I think that's okay. You know, she's got a, a few errors now in the night, so she's gonna wanna rein it back in. Eight kills, three errors, 21 attempts, but certainly I love the aggressiveness. Great dig by the Lions. Newsome, just look at that powerful swing. Taylor Lanford gonna hit it over. Tullis off of her forearms. You can see, you can tell right away on a reaction, she wants to have that one back, Meredith. Yeah, absolutely, and it's so interesting. That's the second time that's happened where Tullis is in position, but she swings those arms and, and you know, it's just inches that she kind of needs to yeah. move her body over against Taylor Lanfair. Um, but both times out of bounds. Doggo sets it. Here's Newsom, a little tip shot. What a play there by Newsom. Taking a little page out of Taylor Lanfair's book. We've seen a, a couple of roll shots of, like that from her, maybe one from Wooker, and Newsom um, tallying her 13th kill of the night. 13 kills, hitting over 300. She's also got four digs to add to this incredible stat line. She's gonna serve it all the way across the court. Shaftmaster gonna throw it over to McKenna Wooker. Great dig by Tullis. Hidalgo blocked by the Gophers. Tullis gonna keep it in play. Oh, Newsom's gonna have a go. Shaftmaster, a little tip shot. Tullis keeps it in play once again. Off a go for player. Shaftmaster gonna go. Oh, Carter Booth wasn't ready for that. Mistimed. Duplishin and great play right there by Crispin Adams all the way across the court for the kill. Yeah, fun to see Crispin Adams coming around on that slide. Great job. You know, both teams playing really good defense. They're scrapping away, but Crispin Adams just too much for that broken block. It looks like she hit that away from her body, too. She was going away from that ball and goes all the way across. That was a very impressive play. Here's Shaftmaster. Wooker throws it down, and that one stays in play for the Golden Gophers. That looks like a swing out of the number one recruit in the country. Very, very strong swing by McKenna Wooker. She's got a quick arm there, and so she, when she sees that seam, she's going to snap on that ball and sneak it through the seam. Really nice job. Wooker, get this, six kills, no errors so far in this match. Having a very productive game. Duplishin all the way over to Hidalgo. McGraw with the dig, Shaftmaster gonna bump it over to Wooker. Oh, look at that play right there by Tullis. She was there in the right time. Hidalgo, oh, was that like punched or something? By yeah, Jenna it was kind of coming at Jenna Wenis's face. Hidalgo, though, racks up uh, uh, her sixth kill of the night and goes positive in terms of hitting percentage. Really important. We talked about her working her way in her match. You know, we got to call out the great defense by Tullis, too. She's mm -hmm. digging a lot of balls back oh, yeah. there. Well, you saw that powerful swing by Adalgo. You can see Wenis is like, I don't want a piece of this. She <laughs> just puts her hands, protects her face from that one. There's one. A shaft master going to set it up for Erica Davis. Great block by the Lions and just finds some open space right there by the Golden Gophers. Melanie Shaftmaster with kill number four on the night on eight swings. Um, a nice job to, to try and keep that southeastern Louisiana defense off off uh, balance. But, you know, I mentioned Tullis. She's leading all players with 14 digs this match. Lions gonna get this offense set up. Here's Hidalgo off a go for his player on that hit. Taylor Lanfair, a high set for Wooker. Great block there by the Lions. Shaftmaster gonna have a go. Taylor Lanfair swing. Newsome keeping it in play. Here's Duplishin. 
Taylor Lanfer in that back row. Shaftmaster Erica Davis finds some open space in that lion side of the floor. Wonderful job by Erica Davis to be an option in transition. Melanie Shaftmaster likes to push her middles in transition if she can. And there's Erica Davis ready to go, has a one on one. Melanie Shaftmaster, a great all-around player here, serving it up for the Gophers. She's got 14 double-doubles on the season with assists and digs. Jenna Wenis keeps it in play off the block attempt. Oh, a little too much pop on that hit. Hidalgo hits it over, Taylor Lanfair over to Wooker, and that one's out of play. Just a little too much power on that hit. Yep, just a little much. And we've seen this, you, you mentioned this, we've seen this a few different times where we've just seen a bit much from the Gopher offense. Just, you know, they're used to facing a different size block, a different look in front of them, and just hit a little wide, a little, little far. Taylor Lanfair in the back row here, Shaftmaster in the front row. Just a soft touch by Wooker. Tullis. Newsome. Now Shaftmaster over to Wooker. Tipped by a Lions player. Tullis. Here's Duplishin. Gophers keep it in play. McGraw for behind her. Here's Jenna Wenis. Oh, great diving effort there by Newsome. Tip shot by Hidalgo. Shaftmaster looking for an open player. She finds Wooker. Oh, that is just so unlucky for the Lions. They are just standing there. Great play there by McKenna Wooker to find that yes, open space. Yes, very, very smart. She saw it wide open. Nobody home for the Lions. A beautiful job by the freshman Wooker. For Wooker, that's kill number seven for her on the game. She's also got four blocks to go on that stat line. Newsome in the back row. They're not going to give it to her this time. Tip shot. Oh, is that a pancake? Oh, another pancake from the Gophers. This rally's going to keep going. Duplishin from behind here. Kill Kelly with a great dig. Shaftmaster. Taylor Lanfer throws it down and right off the Lions' body. Oh, my goodness. That came with fire. That was an incredible swing by Taylor Lanfer. Southeastern Louisiana left that line open, and she absolutely crushed that line ball. Gophers up 14-8, kill Kelly to serve. The dog on the back row. Oh, that was just a miss, uh, just a bad play right there by the line. She's given up that to Erica Davis. Unforced errors. Yeah, I mean, you just can't, when you have back row setters and you're running a 6-2 like them, you just can't pass that tight. The setters have no chance, and, and then, you know, any opposing team is going to take advantage of that overpass. Kill Kelly to serve while the Gophers are on a 3-0 run now. Duplishin. Oh, Gopher defense. Jenna Wenis. Erica Davis say not in this house. Just a beautiful block by the two of them. Hidalgo just not quite high enough off of those hands. And Erica Davis and Jenna Wenis, just a beautiful block put up there. Well, we're going to have a timeout on the floor. Coach Jeremy White wanted to talk this thing over. All of a sudden, Meredith, we're looking at this scoreboard. Minnesota's doubled the Lions' lead now, 16-8. to eight, And they're also riding a 4-0 scoring run. That's exactly right. Minnesota been more dominant in this third set. And it's important. They We've talked about they want to get the sweep so that they can move on to the second round of this tournament. Southeastern Louisiana trying to be the upset in this match, but not, not able to bring it as much here in this third set. Um, but certainly both teams looking to advance to the second round and, and then, you know, depending on how that goes to the Sweet 16. Well, I hate to be the person that jinxes, but Coach McCutcheon for the Gophers has never lost a first or a second round matchup. And you're getting a look right here at the bracket, this bottom part, uh, Florida State, Northern Iowa. We have them before here. Northern Iowa with a sweep and sets 3-0. And then they're going to play the winner of this matchup, Southeast Louisiana, Minnesota, tomorrow night here at Maturi Pavilion. At 7 p.m. That's exactly and right, Connor. Here for that yeah, I'll be well. here for that. That's right. I, I'll be, I'm in on the action. But yeah, you saw that bracket. Minnesota obviously getting a two seed in their side of the bracket. They're ranked eight overall, as you mentioned yep. earlier in the broadcast, Connor. Um, but getting the two seed and therefore getting to host this section of the tournament. Um, they love playing at home. Maturi Pavilion's a great volleyball facility. It's a super knowledgeable fan base that's here for their Gophers. So they're glad to be at home and looking to kind of get through this portion of the bracket quickly. Well, you can definitely tell that these fans are thankful that these games are here, these first couple rounds, because there's at least 4,000 Gopher fans packed in Maturi Pavilion to cheer on their Gophers and hopefully make it to the Sweet 16 in their case. Great 
spike right there thrown down by Hannah Brewer out of the time and exactly what these Lady Lions needed. Yes, exactly. Hannah Brewer with her third kill on the night being a nice little option for, for the Lions there in the middle. The dog to serve. McGraw with a set. Shaftmaster with a set. When is off of a couple Lions players now to play. The Gophers come back with a point out of the timeout. Yeah, Wenis there does a really nice job of using Kaylin Newsom's hands. They, she wasn't penetrating over the net. They were able to kind of take advantage of her vision and, and uh, a nice point for Jenna Wenis. Wenis still tied with teammate Carter Booth, now neck and neck with nine kills. Duplishin off of Carter Booth on the spike. Kill Kelly in the back row. Shaftmaster going to set it up for Jenna Wenis, who throws it down off of a Lions player. The Gophers pick up point number 18. A great um, great job by Rachel Kill Kelly to pick up that ball off of the block. And then Melanie Shaftmaster with a beautiful set to Jenna Wenis. She takes advantage, high hands and down. And for Jenna Wenis, that is a double-double now for kills and digs. 10 kills, 13 digs. A great game, and right there. Looked like she was part of that play, but went off of her out of play. Yep, you got it. So, uh, Kaylin Newsom swinging high, swinging hard, trying to use those hands, and she does it. She uses those hands out of bounds onto the antenna. Southeastern Louisiana point. Kaylin Newsom, 13th kill so far this game. 13. And just miscommunication there between Kill Kill. You can see she was a little frustrated there with McGraw that she didn't let her take that ball right there on the return. Yeah, as you said, just miscommunication between the two of them and kind of fell between them. They got to be clear about who has the seam ball. You're usually talking about, I got your seam, I got your seam. I'm going to take the ball between us. Shaftmaster sets it up for Carter Booth. Oh, what a dig! Booth again! And she throws it down on that second try. Oh, wow. That was such a good <laughs> initial dig. But yeah. Booth says, no way, I'm not letting you have it and comes back down with it. But a really beautiful dig there by Lexi, Lexi Gonzalez. Yeah, Gonzalez, that was the first time we've called her name. What a fantastic Ooh. dig. And then Booth was just there. That ball unluckily went right back to her and she threw yeah. it down. And that was a fantastic placement right there by Carly Wilkerson. Splits those back row defenders. I think that was Wenis and Kill Kelly back there. Great placement on that ball. Yeah, that's right. Wilkerson with her seventh kill of the night now. Um, second on the team and does, doing a nice job over there on the right side. Here's Kill Kelly. Looks like Booth's going to come around, but they're going to go to Landfair instead. Great player by Tullis. Blocked by Booth. Five or six feet, seven inches. That's not who you want to hit it to usually, yeah. Meredith. Carter Booth was block number three, I believe. And listen, honestly, on that point, if I'm the Southeastern Lady Lions, I'm a little disappointed. Crispin Adams took a nice swing. Somebody could have covered that ball. Somebody could have dug that ball up, and nobody was there supporting her, covering her. They need to turn that around. So here's a doggo. Booth at the net, and she was just right there. Awkward hit by a dog with just too much power on that. And once again, that's happened a few times where those uh, returns off the serve, they just go back to the other team, and Booth's right there to throw it down. Yeah, they're just too tight to the net. And, and again, you know, Southeastern Louisiana is running a 6-2, which means their setters are always back row. You, they, you can't put them that tight to the net. And look right there, exactly what the Lady Lions want. I, that might be her third, Taylor Lanfair's third service error so far yeah, this match. Uh, certainly, you know, a, a few more errors than, than we're used to seeing from her at the service line. Um, we'll see if the, the Lady Lions can take advantage. Generally a good server. Here's Schaffer. They're going to go to Landfair. Off of Tullis. Going to keep it in play. No, oh, that's going to go out of bounds. Really good swing. Taylor Landfair out of the back row can be super, super terminal. And, and you saw it right there. We talked about this. She loves that wrist away shot. Absolutely one-on-one. -on -one just hammers that ball. A few times we've said that she's had a service there. She's come back the first point. I don't know if she's hearing us or something. <laughs> she comes back with the kill. <laughs> and the Gophers will come back and get a point after the Lions pick one up last time. Score 23-13. Minnesota two points away from facing Northern Iowa tomorrow night. That's right. And they're going to push hard here. CeCe McGraw will see if she can maybe get an ace. Not the case here. Tullis going to find Hidalgo. Great dig there by Taylor Lanfer. Shaftmaster going to have to hit it backwards there. Duplishin. Hidalgo, great block by the Gophers. Oh, my gosh. The Lions keep it in play. Are you kidding me? Wenis, Shaftmaster. Here's Wooker. Great block by the Lions. Shaftmaster. Wooker again. The Lions going to keep it in play. Duplishin. Here's Hidalgo. Lanfer in the back row. Shaftmaster. Erica Davis. Oh, my gosh. 
Duplishin, Hidalgo, <laughs> McGraw, Shaftmaster over to Wilker, try it again. Three times the charm. Oh my goodness. That was just one Woo! of the best rallies we've seen all day. Woo! We've got some good volleyball here tonight, Connor. It's been such a good match. But when McKenna Wilker has a big seam like that, she is going to terminate. Thought I was going to run out of breath there with all those <laughs> names. Not going to lie. Wilker trying. Oh, Wenis couldn't get that leg out to keep the ball in play. The Lions come back. Fantastic play there on the return from the serve. Look at that block by Duplishin. I love to see that solo block. Two blocks now for Southeastern Louisiana. And they keep the match alive. And that ended a 3-0 scoring run. Still match point here for the Gophers. Tallest to serve. Here's Wenis. Shaftmaster going to set up for McKenna Wilker. Tap shot. That's going to go out of play. And that's going to do it here. First round in Minneapolis. The Golden Gophers sweep southeast Louisiana. The Lady Lions go down 25-14 in set number three. Gophers set that one up all the way. What exactly did you see there on that last play that led up to that point? You know, I think the Gophers have been doing a really good job of attacking. They've done a good job. They've done a super wonderful job of, of blocking. And they were just too much to handle at the net for the Southeastern Lady Lions. Listen, Southeastern should be really proud of what they yeah. brought here in their very first NCAA tournament match. They played hard. They played aggressive. They brought really great defense and at times really exciting volleyball. So I think they have a lot to take away from this match. And let me tell you something, Meredith. Kayla Newsom, she's a junior. She's going to be back on this squad. This is a very, very young team, Meredith. And this Southeast Louisiana team could be coming back from the Southland Conference maybe another year. Yeah, you've got it. I mean, Duplishin is a, a sophomore. Tullis is a junior. Newsom is a junior. Hidalgo's a sophomore. Yes. Um, Brewer is a sophomore. So they've got a ton of returning talent. I think they should hold their heads high and be really 